The gates of the eternal heavens have been laid open. Its denizens have marched, departing their bastion to stem the tide. The realms of mortal kind are to be swept up in the coming storm. The choices of few will ripple out to affect the many. Destiny calls to a hope reborn. Oblivion awaits upon their failure. Our fate is in their hands. We are back. Hey, back the friends. Hey, friend. Hey, friend. Uh, hey, friend. No, we that get to find was. out what happened to Torad. Yeah, Torad changing Tor-Ed. drastically. Tor-Ed. Well, before we get to Torad, we need. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna cover one of my uh, or one of you guys' favorite subjects. Oh no, my shortcomings. Oh wow. So We're not here to talk be about a your non role play session. No, no. It should only be about an hour. We're only going to talk about one of them. <laughs> so we want to talk about your shortcomings. Uh, I didn't think we were going to talk about your erectile dysfunction. Well, Major not when it comes to you, man. but. <laughs> Thanks, Bobby. That's another joke we got to edit out. Thanks a lot, buddy. Thanks I'll a lot. just leave it in. Dick jokes are always funny, even if it's against me. <sighs> no, it's my. Uh, <laughs> My handing out or my uh, distributions of uh, the boons. Yeah, not very good. <laughs> yeah, we're very we're boonless. Well, no, then one of you has except a boon, for, and it was a sympathy except for boon. Alistair. Alistair has a sympathy boon. So, all those ones. I'm here to make things right. <laughs> I want to hear you guys groveling and begging at my godlike feet for any boons you might want or you think you deserve over the last. What session is this? Nine. Nine. Or, yeah, this uh, is number nine. Ah, poor Torad. You know what? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a ruling now. Torad gets none. Torad gets none. No, like, <laughs> rah, rah, rah. Coincidentally, that's the number he can count to. <laughs> oh, what? Marcus is going to kill you later. <laughs> no. <laughs> See, this makes it sound like we hate Marcus. No, no I love, love him. Marcus. I love to yeah, uh, shit on great. him while he's not here. We hate I mean, he's, he's here. here. He's kind of a big guy. I don't want to like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and dashingly handsome. Just remember that. All right. So, For usually we start Marcus. with. Usually we start with stupid Bobby, but you know I'm going to go around the other way and start with stupid Derek. And hey, Marty, uh, besides the what sympathy, number am I holding up for you? <laughs> I'm number one. Yeah, uh, sure. <laughs> do you have any that you can think of that uh, boon wise do you think you uh, deserve? Uh, good role play, good move. I've got one for him. What? He was MVP of last round because he put mage armor on the people that needed it. Mm. I want to hit you two more times. <laughs> How much strength do you have left? <laughs> I'm at 10. You have 10. I will roll 2d6. And if I get higher than a 10, which is not likely, you saved his life. Then I'll give you a boon. Is that fair? Fair enough, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a good one, Bobby. Did you save Yuri's life? A 6 and a 3. 9. Very close. You would have had one hit point. would have been dragging you out of there, but, yep. but I didn't quite save your life. Do you have anything else that could put you over the edge? Uh, reminded Yuri about like cutting down the guy in the session because he was like, "What do I do? I'm I'm back here behind enemy lines. I can't figure out." Ah, uh, the sea squeak like, fight. Yeah. All right. Like, uh, what were you gonna do beforehand? And he's like, "Oh yeah, I was gonna save that guy." So yeah, that that was. Kind of, that was kind of helpful. I think that guy would have drowned. You know, I think you're a little presumptuous on that one, but yeah, we'll give it to you. <laughs> so I'm, I would say yes, based off of not that one, but that, that's a very good one. That's not what put you over the edge. I just thought about though, Bobby, when he damaged the creature, did exactly its hit points with negative 
strength, you would not have killed it. And I got a feeling you guys would have been a lot worse situation the next round. Gotcha. All right, boon for boon for Alistair. All right, Strom, what you got? My role play. You gotta give me better than that. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I think he's I've got one for you. I got one for you. Paladin and dragging his. I've got one for him, and nobody can debunk this one. Hmm. He should get a boon because he detects evil on everything. I should take one away if I can. <laughs> maybe you should get a boon. I don't even have one, so you don't even get one. Grab. Maybe he get a boon and he will quit detecting evil on everything. Come on, give me an example of something. I, I do like the you coming down here, even though you're going to probably get your whole party killed, which that was – I wasn't sure you were going to come down here. and uh, it, I mean, things might turn out differently because you did now. That was a, a tough fight for your level. It's a – that thing could have killed all of you. Well, technically, he he. What he said was for his role play is correct. Is Let him speak true? for himself. Go ahead and ruin it for yourself, buddy. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, what you're hating, Marty, is that he's actually kind of correct. I know. I just want you to say it. But <laughs> yes, one of the reason I did save role play was because I did bring us down here. But I I didn't know what I was getting into, but I just knew it was evil. Now, I'm going to say this much was that the role play for our last two episodes or three episodes now, six and seven were probably my best ones so far, but also along with Derek, because he was fighting the urge to follow me down here. Hmm. I mean, like the entire group, honestly, they they didn't want to do this. That's true. And, And... in a way, I kind of forced them to come down here. There is no kind of a way. You, you So you're you saying you're willing to give up your boon for us to get a boon? Yes. Yeah. Hey. Sounds good. All right, boon. We, we, you we get a boon. <laughs> All right, Bobby. What oh, do you got? my turn now. Can I talk? Yeah. No, I mean, how about I give you one if you don't talk? <laughs> no, because I earn more than that. <laughs> <laughs> how about you shut up? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I love you. You know what? What? I think I'm going to accidentally lose that maze. We can't fight no more undead, so we're never going to go back down into the crypt. Oh, I mean, that's no hair off my ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, what you got, buddy? Nah, just uh, for finally hitting something. <laughs> yes. All right, Boone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been... Uh, I just wanted to hear some of what you guys felt. I, I was going to give one pretty much to each of you anyway. Not saying you don't deserve it, but I've been pretty greedy with those. Now they're going to be a little bit, you know... So I will like, like you guys. Let's lay down some ground rules. How about for for what's boon worthy? Uh, something like because we talked about earlier, like funny jokes and, and just, various things. Just re- I am uh, as I said, it's a shortcoming of mine. I don't think about them in my moment. I got yeah, like I got all these numbers and crunches. Just go ahead like. and just throw it out there. You know, you you think, hey man, I scratched my ass. Is that a boon? Sure, bud. Maybe. Well, I think Probably if not. it's each imp- each player feels that somebody deserves one, they should call it out and. Bring it to his How about attention. this? If it's like that's cool, runs through your head. All right. Good. Oh, I should get one for just showing up then, because I'm cool. Remember, too. after five <laughs> used, Daddy gets one. Mm. Yeah, we're not but if you can't good. remember to count, we're not going to tell you. <laughs> no, it's Torah that can't count. No, <laughs> zero, Oh God, he's going to come through the door any minute. <laughs> Fill it. <laughs> you go All right. And black, you so, bastards. I knew you talking about me. Speaking of Torad, you, uh, Yori, reached down, uh, did a heel check, checked to see if Torad's alive. He breathes. Whew. It's shallow and <laughs> <laughs> his breath is shallow and, uh, you know, you can barely and, tell. And a little bit stinky. A little bit stinky. A little bit stinky. He's been eating more of that radish stew. Uh, at least that's a good part. Can, can we at least out. hire a cook? Just to cook. <laughs> I mean, now that he's out, maybe, yeah, sure. He's an but he is alive. But what is his state of alive? Is he dying or is he just alive? Uh, I, he looks stable. Okay. So he's a stable hand now. So. Let me out of here. Let me out. We yeah, you hear the banging on the uh, so we'll on get the to bars. You later. We'll get to you in a minute, woman. You're safe now. Uh, so, <laughs> can we put him in the crypt and we'll just come back and get him later? <laughs> just, just let him spoon the. Let's just let him spoon the mummy. It'll be fine. <laughs> mummy wakes up. What the? <laughs> well, 
Yeah, it went in Rome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All he's right. so gonna kill us later. <laughs> so to remind you of the 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 layout of this room, to the south there's a open tomb. To the west are there are piled bodies tied up, three of them. I should say bodies, but all right, you know, people laying on the ground. You can't tell if they're dead or alive. And then to the east. There is uh, a cage with a woman in it, played by uh, Cara Delevingne. And she's uh, demanding to be let out and banging on the bars. I take it that, uh, I take it that's the... Uh, is she evil? Crypt Keeper's do, do we wife. know if she's evil? Oh, you can detect that now that the room has been expunged. So, I detect evil on her. You want to try it? All right, yeah. so you get closer to the cage and yeah. Do your iffy weird thing you got going on there. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, she is. And no one is surprised by this. <laughs> Ooh, nope. That's she kind of, like, looks at you like she knows you did that. Uh, by the way, it's when you do sense it on a person, it is not a f- secret at any time to that person. You can't do it at right. a party. Like, hey, they know you just screened them for evil. <laughs> but, yes. Yes, she is. Yeah. Let me out. I am the bouncer at the the uh, bar of good. <laughs> You're not allowed in. <laughs> Let me out. Please. Why should I? I have done nothing wrong. Please. <laughs> that thing could have killed me. Yet it didn't. And in fact, it looks like it killed your husband. Yes, he... It, he summoned that thing. You helped him. He summoned it? Yes, I had nothing to do with it. Oh, um, calling her blood. <laughs> yeah. Perception. I believe I nothing of what she says. That text. is a 26. You got a 15? You got a 26? Jeez. Natural. Yuri? Sorry, 25. Did you roll a natural? Natural 20? 19. Oh, natural 19. I got a 12. <laughs> okay. I'm a 15. Okay. Who's playing Bev Moore this turn? Who's playing her? Who's playing her? That is still Bobby. Bobby. Oh, I'll we'll do it again. All, All right. right. Bobby's got Bev Moore. Yes, please. Ah, uh, roll Perception, perception. I'm pretty sure she believes. <laughs> okay. That'd be a total of a nine. All right. Are you uh, rolling perception or are you rolling sense motive, Bobby? Sense motive. Oh, sorry. Sense motive. You don't roll again because you got it wrong. No, it would have been the same thing. <laughs> Either way. Okay. <laughs> Did, I say perce- Did I say perception? No, yeah, I, I said perception. Uh, oh, so it sounds like somebody said it. I don't believe her. Uh, you, uh, Alistair, you believe her. Strom, you're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, she didn't. You do not believe her, Yuri. Something about the way she said it, kind of sending little messages to you. That she is lying. I do not believe you. You are the one that summoned that creature. And I believe you just put yourself in that cage as a way to make yourself look innocent. Your husband mm-hmm. was a sacrifice, wasn't he? Yuri and Alistair, please do a spell card check, yeah. Mm, seven gets me to a 16. 16. I got an 11. All right. Alistair, why would she lock herself behind physical bars? Are there iron bars that would keep it out? No, this thing can go through that, as far as you know. Well, I mean, I unless uh, I mean uh, the uh, I think there's like your priest cold iron or something like that can black. Like your priest made the check, so maybe you might want to talk to him about. But that's like the thing that's curious. She's behind physical bars. Is there a type of metal that can block ghosts and such? I do not believe so. Is there a check I can make <laughs> something like that, or is that? <laughs> I mean, are you going up to the peruse the cage? Or yeah, I'll peruse the cage. Is there, like, thaumaturgy on any of these bars? Uh, yeah, you know, on the floor you see, written in blood, there's a, a circle at her feet. Oh, well, yeah, I think she's... You see her, uh, and as you look, you see her hand is wrapped with some gauze. Like, or she took some cloth and wrapped her hand up. Yeah, it's not the physical bars that kept this thing out. There's there's a protection from... What? Well, spell check? To kind of sure. I know what it is. Ooh, 15 plus 9, so... Or is that... No, that's a 13. So, yeah. um... 22. 
This is not your specialty by any means, but it is some sort of special or like circle against protection against the undead. Okay. So yeah, he was right. She's lying. That that keeps undead out. <sighs> really? And you needed that to protect yourself. But is the cage truly locked? She swings it open. You're, you're right Basically, in front of it, like, oh! <laughs> I got, luckily, this crossbow is, is loaded in the... She, so, she has her hands up. Yeah. Yuri's got the mace at the ready. It's not like I can swing it, though, but I, she don't know that. You have ten, that's average. She, she don't know I'm hurt, <laughs> hopefully. I'm just saying, you can still swing the damn thing. The average person can swing a mace. All right, so we're tying her up and taking her to the authorities, right? And yes. gagging her in case she can speak spells. That, that is also true. May I at least say something? Before? No, maybe when you're in an anti-magic zone, then you can speak. We don't trust you. Let's make that clear. If I started you're to talking, cast... You're talking. Somebody with the gag? Hurry. <laughs> I ain't got rope. Please. Speak. If she says anything that sounds like magic turgy... I am pulling this trigger. <laughs> so is Bed Moore. <laughs> that, that's consider that a ready to action. <laughs> All right. Consider. Is um. I don't ask you to understand my situation or even take any pity on it. But I was sold to that man on the floor years ago. And I've had to do what I had to do to survive for a long time. And my life has been pain, long drawn out pain, after being sold to one master to the next. So I ask, instead of being burned at some stake, which is what's going to happen to me if I go up there, she looks up. You kill me now, Knight of Vastra, and end this quickly for me. They will burn me, at best. Just make my death unlike my life, quick and painless. That's all I ask. And she goes to her knees. Since motive. She moves up. She pulls the side of her, like, strike out my neck kind of thing. I believe Why it. do you serve Rifet? It's a means to an end. And there is only one end. way. Look around here. There's power here. And death. And it's um, the only thing I could find. Is is the circle... Is she still sort of on the circle? No, she's like halfway through it. Look, look. We'll squirt her off. If you She's can. on her knees. Yeah, I'll Dead. help her up. If you and can die no. over here and not on the I circle. I stop him. <laughs> St- Strom stops him. He puts a hand on you for a second. I don't think she should die in the circle. I don't know what it does exactly. I know it protects against the undead, but I don't know exactly what it does. <sighs> if you kill her inside the circle, even partly Repent. inside the circle. She looks sideways at Alistair and scoots out of the circle. Okay. On her knees. Coming towards you. Repent for what? I do not regret what I did. These people treated me like an animal. They deserve to die. And I would do it again. All I ask is for a quick death. And to end this bullshit. What is your name? She seems like she's telling the truth to me. Out of 13? <laughs> My name is Casa. Casa. I will detect magic, though. She has magic in her pouch next to her. Uh, it's a kind of like, oh, like Indiana satchel. Jones satchel, <laughs> and that is uh, the only magic that you're 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 seeing. What what is it? Necromancy or? Um. I guess it would be general. Yeah, uh, you know what? Necromancy, yeah. Yeah, necromancy. Uh, can, can, can we see what's magical inside the pouch? Actually, I'm sorry. She has two forms of magic on her. I'm going through her sheet. Okay. Uh, she has uh, on the long satchel at her side, it's necromancy pouring out of this thing. Not pouring, sorry. Like it's got, It's got magic. But on the other side, there's magic pouring out of this little pouch on her belt. And it is power. 
It's not uh, any form of magic. It is raw, raw magical power. Like. Like no no school no school and just just raw like Mad- primordial power yeah okay uh, that's <laughs> I think it's a trick <laughs> it's not what I'm seeing here Did you, are you setting up some kind of thing where if we kill you <sighs> willingly like you no I just want to stand okay well what's in the pouch on your it's a stone one? I found down here the stone or a piece of a finger? Stone. Can, can I see it? You want me to reach for it? She looks at you like... Fair enough, I'll, I'll get it. Just don't make any sudden moves. Cause Be careful. All right, I take that. I'll, and I'll lift the satchel off of her. You get the satchel and you take the little pouch on her yeah. belt? Okay. She doesn't seem to care. Doesn't seem like it even bothers her. The reason I said to repent... I understand that man did something horrible to you. He actually was... Uh, my master is quite gentle. A good man, actually. Besides the... Not having a problem with owning someone. Hmm. Are you the one that summoned the skeletons? Yes. Did you have the people attacked and brought down here? Not on purpose. I've been quietly abducting villagers and turning them into servants of mine for some time. When I got out of my control, I made too many. Miscalculated somewhere. She's looking off to the side, like, actually thinking about probably the calculations she fucked up, and and they got out of hand. So you had a plan to get back at your adductors, your former masters. Get back masters. at them all. Burn it all down. I don't deserve this mercy I'm asking for, Holy Warrior. But I know it's what you do. So I'm asking either. All the same. Please. I do not want to burn. I will take your life. I take out my holy symbol of Aster. Which is the harp crossed harp. Yeah. And I put it around her neck. All right. She looks uncomfortable with it on, but it's not like burning or anything. <laughs> May you see Vaster in the afterlife. Are you like swinging or are you cutting her throat or what? You cop- chopping her head off? Or what? Chopping her head off. Just making. You doing the old cut down the sure? in between the. You're, you're not feeling your full strength right now. I'm just saying. Um, Still got a 12 strength. Okay. I mean, it's not easy to chop somebody's head off. Yeah, but, you know, we're in pretend. Land, okay, so fair enough. <laughs> hopefully his... Uh, well, I've stuff. never watched a movie really when they just fail. Nobody ever gets, like, halfway through, like, ah, oh, damn it. Oh, damn. <laughs> She's like, wah, 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 wah. All right, so you you cut her head off. Mm-hmm. All right. Whing, and her head... And then her body flops to the ground. All right, let's all take a look at this stone. All right, you you open it up. Uh, is everybody just kind of like looking around the room? I'm like, taking back my holy. Soul. Right. It actually conveniently fell off when you have no neck. Kind of does that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like laying on the ground. Are you uh, doing anything over her body, like I'm, rights wise? Yes, I am doing rights, and I actually plan on to myself and to Vaster. I plan on burying her body. Okay. What are you doing? Uh, I know, Alistair, you're looking at the I'm, stone. I'm actually Yuri, really upset doing? over the whole situation because I don't think she should have died that way. But I, that's why I was asking her questions, and I was not happy with her answer because she was taking them over time. So she had no remorse for what she did. So You would have been cool I, with her burning. I don't think we should dispense justice on her. That is a, a thing to be taken into consideration. But you took law into your own hands there. Strom, and it is what it is at I this mean, point. I it, mean, it's his place to make that choice. It's not mine. Okay. Because um, that's what his thing does. Bev Moore's kind of searching around. She's like, I don't see any traps. She's kind of doing that thing. Uh, the stone. You open the little, it's a little bell pouch. You you open it up and you see it's got a faint glow of blue. You haven't touched it yet. I'm not going to put it sitting in there. 
Now, is it like visibly it blue? Like it, like you can see blue, yeah, a glowing blue. <laughs> it's just straight up glowing. But it's very exactly. faint, but you can see it in this dark pouch glowing. Okay. You're not sure if you had it out, it would be glow bright enough to be like, oh, it's glowing, but it's in a dark pouch. So. Gotcha. Um, can I feel it through the pouch? Uh, you feel cooler. It feels huh. cool. Like the temperature drops maybe five degrees or something. Gotcha. Like... Is it finger bone shaped? Did nope. Just no, it's a, a it's a tear shaped blue stone about maybe two inches long, maybe an inch wide. Gotcha. And it maybe a little bit bigger cool. than that. And it's natural. You haven't touched it, but you feel cool around you, I should yeah. say. Well, I, yeah, I should. That's what I mean. Um, hmm. I'm kind of terrified to touch this thing. Like, so I'll just zip it back. Well, I need to touch it if I want to, like. Identify it. Correct. Identify it. Huh. Hmm. I will give you that, like, through identification, if just by looking at it, a high enough roll, like, all right, this thing's safe to touch, maybe. I'll give you, like, a little bit of, like, right. uh, a like, little bit of, like, hey, I... So, yeah. That's, nothing like, hey, this thing's got obvious crossbones on it. I probably shouldn't touch it, you know, like... Gotcha. It, I'm not saying it will be totally safe. I'm just saying, like, I'll, I'll, but, tell you, I'll give you your chances, like, maybe. A what if, what if, like, okay, so I, I guess what I want to know, like kind of roll an arcane to know if like something like this pure magic as a source is that just going to feed back into me and just like yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah you know all right yeah give me a yeah okay let's see what you get nine plus nine so 18 what was your target uh it seems pretty self-contained whatever it is it's okay. like it it is what it is uh, yeah and i'll get out uh let's see the Ickvi feeling in this room is gone, right? Yeah, I don't, you don't feel Ickvi holding it. You don't feel, uh, besides the glow and a temperature drop, that's it. All right. I'm not saying um, that that by itself is not unconcerning. I'm just well, saying that. Um, I was, how's the floor? Is the floor covered in dust or? Blood? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Is there a broom? No, she didn't really care about that stuff. I Did think she? we should have asked her where she found it and if it was in this room or okay, somewhere so else. Okay, so I guess I'm... Um, I guess we'll do this in the end. Uh, well, uh, detect magic the room. The only other magic is in that satchel that you have. Okay. So. Did you check the satchel? No. I'm, oh. I'm going to identify <laughs> stuff once we get to the end. Okay. And like. Uh, as you search, you find a um, Bevmora found a pouch. She, she hands it to Yuri for safekeeping. It's uh, six bloodstones worth 50 standards each. <clears throat> And about 160 standards of that old coin. It was on that was on her person. Looks like she may have found it around here too. As you're all kind of gathering the gold up and or the uh, standards and the bloodstones, you hear something coming down the hallway, like kind of rushing down, like and it's getting louder. Get behind me! Is I ready in action? Okay. And you I see you bust through the door, Keanu guard. <laughs> the, guy, the guard played by Keanu Reeves. Whoa! And he's got a sword out. Looks like he got a couple of his friends, and they've come down for you guys. He's the one that's in the front, and he has a couple of other guards with him, uh, five in total. And Or they rush in. Uh, they see you guys. They look like they're looking for a fight, and they see you guys and relax. In the midst of them, uh, you see a man in ro uh, long robe, gray and white, Played by older Danny Glover, like okay. 65, 70 year old Danny Glover. I guess that's around where I, how old he is. Uh, he's holding a uh, staff in his right hand, and he's looks. He's got his left hand free. Looks like he's ready to do something. I, who knows? Or yeah, he has a holy symbol, a vesture around his neck. Whoa, like, whoa. And you, you see the the guard that's played by Keanu Reeves looks at the the headless one. Whoa. You stop that, one of the other guards said. And kind of, like, shoves him. <laughs> uh, we, we, I got help. I was hoping you guys would be all right. Uh, it seems like you handled it on your own. And he sheaths his sword. Took me a while to find people brave enough, I, I mean, dumb, dumb, brave, brave enough to come down here to come help you. Strom just kind of just, like, slaps himself in the face, just like, ugh. Uh, this is, uh... My name is uh, Deacon Moss. Hello. 
as the Danny Glover figure stands forward, steps forward. Are you all right? We were attacked uh, by a shadow. Yes. It drained the strength of some of my constraints. He looks impressed. Um, I cannot do anything for you with that here. Um, please, uh, is anybody? He has like herbs and shit. Like he's pulling out of his bag. Apparently, he doesn't know you have a caster. Like the heels. Um, does anybody need more conventional healing? We need a restoration. I, I, I have He's a, things back at the church for that, but nothing here. One of the guards is like, what happened here? You see Keanu ga- guard is over uh, Casa, like looking at like her cut of her head and looking and just like kind of like looking around. Well, that one doesn't look. How'd that one die? He's looking at the... <laughs> the the um, wife. She and, she was the priestess of her fet, and instead of trying to be burned at the stake, she asked. Ah, her yeah, her you see face. Keanu like step in. Yeah, I was like, this is horrible, bro. Uh, this is terrible. See when the guard goes, looks at him like sternly. What? Uh, she were private. And you see the guy, like, like Keanu go, goes, as you were, private, and he goes, Sergeant, and he moves along. My head explodes. <laughs> Say, what? <laughs> and it's all over the walls. So Keanu is over all of them? Yeah. I would not have pictured that. Yeah, my head was corpse so falls to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> like, a lot of things happen, guys. Just like he's talking to the guards now. We don't get statements. A little later, let them calm down. You know, they don't even know what they're going to be saying. All right, guys? So just, like, calm down. Let's just, you know, we'll get statements later. I'll take care of all that, okay? And the priest kind of, like, pats the piano guard on his shoulder. Uh, piano guard gives you guys a nod and kind of, like, they start so those cleaning things three up. three people are dead. Like, somebody is, at this point in time, you said they were tied up. but they, are they- uh, One of them is alive. Knocked out. Unconscious. Good. You have saved... Ah, villager. Whoa. Hey. Uh, 17 year old boy. Mission Man. accomplished. Boy, man. Just, you know, just to be careful. Nobody had checked them yet, so I didn't say anything. But yeah. as they're looking, they go, this one's alive. And they're yeah, we can open that for you. you know, yeah. You know, uh, so they're kind of going through the crime scene as you guys are standing there. Yeah, the priest comes up to you guys. And he goes, and he gets nice to, to meet you, Deacon. What is your name? He's this looking at you. And this is Alistair. Strom Alistair. What about said, the boy nice on the ground? You. Is he okay? He, uh, he actually help. needs medical help. Oh, let's get him out of here. He uh, he or she, uh, Deacon Moss orders some of the guards to move him, and they uh, uh, comply. And they they're helping take Torad out of here. He got hit worse by the the shadow. Let's take him to the church. All right. So we're off to see the wizard. The wonderful, the wonderful wizard, wizard of is not in a church. <laughs> For better whiz than was. Um, you follow him to a very... Uh, so he brings you to a, a very Spartan-looking church. Maybe uh, it's probably uh, 70 by 70 building. 70 foot by 70 foot. I mean, it's kind of large, but most of that is taken up by the prayer hall. Um, and he brings you kind of out to... He brings you through um, a bunch of sets of pews. Uh past his, his dais, Amadeus, Amadeus. Uh, this is very symmetrical. <sighs> yes, symmetrical. Has it got a specific deity over it, or is it just... It's faster. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he brings you to the back rooms, apparently where he lives, and then like a little... It's like a little medical center, and then probably the back rooms is where he lives. But he uh, has the guards drop Torad off on a bed, and he starts going through him and checking him. Uh... Let us see how lucky you are. And you said... Oh, Torad yeah. is from this point mute. Torad <laughs> is mute. You said uh, you need restoration. Let me see how many of these potions I have. Well. Two of lesser restoration. We'll probably be fine if we just need to you know, take some time to rest that in. Drink a few beers, relax, take a nice bath. They should be fine after I do all that. 
I have two potions of restoration for lesser restoration for your bravery and your true heartedness through this. I I offer these to you. Thank you. Thank you. You can look up rest of restoration, but you have two potions of them. Yeah, yeah. I think they do one d four back each. I would need three full days of rest. It, re- it restores one d four points of damage. Or an effective ability score can be, uh, you can get one point per eight hours of rest. Or if you do a full 24-hour rest in bed, you can get two points. Okay. I say we save these. Yeah. We save these and we just, we we on vacation for five days. Yep. (laughs) We ain't doing shit. I'm resting. Don't bother me. I'm going to be butt naked in a bed, making sure nobody comes in to bother me. All right. So first of all, I'm taking a full 24 hours. like you only holy got two? water, or mm-hmm. I guess we just need to anoint ourselves. <laughs> Don't blame you. Who are you talking to in this? Are you talking I'm, to uh, Deacon Moss? To the DM. Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, that's what you understand from what uh, gotcha. Bernard told you. That's what you need. Some bo- bathe in the holy waters of your God is what he said. Yeah. To our palate. Oh, you suck. You don't have a God. You're you're atheist. You're screwed for life. I mean, elves are actually traditionally atheists. Or not atheists, but they. Damn the I, gods. And I have a carbon. So what's your next move? Deacon Moss tells you, you'll, uh, I can look after your friend. I'm not exactly sure what has happened to him, but it appears much of his life energy has been drained. He's in a coma. Yes. Very conveniently for a PC it that has disappeared. When when players abandon their characters <laughs> yes. in the middle of a campaign, sometimes they fall into... Horrible comas. Yes. But they still somehow gain experience. It's it's weird. It's very strange. It's strange because when the DM doesn't want to be bothered with a <laughs> character that leaves, he puts them in comas. It's uh, it, it's kind of natural. So uh, he he may need some time. He's well cared for here. I'll make sure he does not starve. I have ways of force feeding him things that he will find very pleasant. He's going to find a big hole. He in loves his radish stew. I will force feed radish stew to him. We wouldn't do nothing untoward towards his body while he is here. Trust me, nothing bad will happen to his body. I don't trust you, but I'm willing to leave him in your care. Uh-huh. I am glad. <laughs> We'll give him the Bill Cosby treatment <laughs> all the way. Aww. Aww. <laughs> so after some pudding pops, he'll, he'll be good to go. Gotta get that pudding. So you can leave him with uh, Deacon Moss. Uh, Deacon Moss does say, um, come talk to me later when you've rested and gathered yourselves. I would like to speak to you with uh, what really happened down there in that tomb. Uh Young God Edric, I think, might have saved you from a legal tangle, which I would like to at least discuss to make sure everything is in order. That is fine. We need several days of rest to restore our power. Find me on the morrow when you're rested. It's going to be nothing challenging. Um, Just need to talk. I'll find you in a week. Before we... We encountered... Let's call him a monster hunter on the road. Um... We were being pursued by some fire werewolves? werewolf werewolf well, a werewolf and what was the fiery things? Fire. I think that was the werewolf. No, that wasn't the werewolf. <laughs> or it was a hellhound. It wasn't a hellhound. It was like a fire dog or something. Anyhow, oh, um, regardless, these things were following us for days, and apparently they were following us because we had the stench of death upon us. He looks. Like, okay, kind of look. <laughs> he said that if we bathed in the waters, he was talking to the paladin of his god, we could get rid of that. Do you know what that might mean? Hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't. I, uh, <laughs> that's the first I've heard of something like that. I mean, it could have just been some wacky medicine man out in the woods. I mean, okay. uh, but he had they like say a- things. A fetus werewolf detector? Like a baby werewolf that was a werewolf wow. detector? His face kind of goes dark. Uh, what, yeah. did he, what did he look like? Yeah. I'll describe him. I, I forget exactly what he looked like. Dark armor, black horse, you know, yeah. that kind of... He looks scary, but he killed a werewolf, so I'm going to go with Monster Hunter. 
because that seems like the thing that you call somebody who saves your life from a werewolf rather than calling him a death knight. <laughs> Bernard. You yes. met Bernard. You know this Bernard. I know of him. Not know him very well. Okay. All right. Uh, you need... You're alive. Huh. 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 Well... <laughs> <laughs> I need to think on this more. To, but uh, I, uh, for your immediate question, I have no, no answer. All right. And uh, Sir Strom, I would like to speak with you at length about things. Of course. Um, my church is yours, as you wish. Take what you need here, and if you need to rest. Uh, but right now, these grounds are yours, Sir Knight. Please allow us to rest, and tomorrow I'll answer all your questions. If you wish. No, he's, I will he, answer. He's uh, showing great reverence towards any time he speaks with Strom, like great reverence towards him, and then he kind of speaks normally to you guys. But Fair enough. like to you guys, he's like looking you in the eyes. He's being very kind of like forward with things, but when he talks to Strom, he kind of gets a little cowled and head down and gotcha. talking right. May um, we please borrow some rooms? I only have one bed here. That's fine, then. We will go to the we end. We know of an inn. Thank you for all your help. Bed. Strom bows. Thank you for your service. You, I think, prevented something something big from happening down there. There is more to this case, but for now, we have stopped the route. Uh, you guys, are you guys going to head to the Wounded Sentry? Yep. What is this? Uh, Tia? So just to re recap for you guys for names, uh, you got Deacon Moss as the priest. Deacon is a not a name. That's a title. That's okay. everybody, I didn't know if everybody so knew just, that. He's just Moss. Moss is his last name. It's like called me a priest Moss or something like that. Uh, Casa is the one you chopped her head off. <laughs> Edric is Keanu Reeves. Okay. All right. You make your way to the Wounded Sentry Inn, and it's a very humble kind of place. Not very big. doesn't have a tavern. It's an inn. Oh, yeah. You're like, oh. oh. As you step in, you just see what looks like a pretty sparse counter. You see a little tap room with a table with five chairs. You can sit around, maybe like a little weight room, but there's no like music. There's no bar here. You don't see any of that kind of kind of deal. And as you guys come in, a uh, young woman played by Chloe Moretz. If you guys have seen her, she's in a couple different movies. I think she's in a new Tom and Jerry movie. She comes out like wiping off her apron and stuff like that. She's got her hair back in a ponytail, kind of dirt on. Looks like she's been working hard at this or uh, on this end. And may I help you? We are in need of room and board. Well, you come to the right place. We are an inn. <laughs> Sager Stoon sent us. Cousin Sager sent you? Ah. Well, why the hell didn't you say earlier? You guys just got here. But <laughs> um. Uh, why didn't you? Come. Come. Let me see what you have. And she's checking out the missive. Always such nice handwriting. Everybody uh, says that. <laughs> I mean, look at it. It, shows it. it is really nice handwriting. Does it look good to me? Or is it just sure, like yeah. chicken scratch? Well, it looks good. Mm -hmm. What, what do you pull? have like some kind of higher standard than the rest of us? What what are you saying? I'm half elfish, yeah. Damn, he just did a duh to you. <laughs> of course I have a higher standard. Wow. So you, you're only half pretentious asshole. That's good to know. Yeah, I'm half of you. <laughs> do you two want a room? <laughs> uh, separately, yes. <laughs> Um, well, and also a bath to drown him in. <laughs> what he's back. I'll take a teaspoon of water for him. <laughs> I still don't think you take. <laughs> I've seen show muscles. <laughs> um, she goes. Uh, well, I I have six rooms, but uh, to put you all up, you would take me out of any sort of income. Do you mind doubling up? I do not mind. You can also pay. Like, you know. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Uh, I, you stay at least a few days, please. Uh, I I'm only have one visitor here anyway, so... Uh, Two rooms is fine. How about... How about this? I'll make this a deal. You can have each a room. Somebody comes to pay. Kick one of your 
you out and I'll put you a W up and clean the room. Is that fair? That sounds fair. How busy I get? It's how much room. I'd give it to you free, but we're on hard times right now and I really like gold. Everybody does. Yeah. How much are your rooms normally? It's a mark a night. So how much would a standard cover? Uh, ten nights? One standard. I said no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she started pushing back and it looked like her hand got weak and like she's like some spirit had possessed her and she takes it right back and puts it in her pocket. So I think we can afford a standard for ten nights. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh no, that's each. I mean, not, I mean, if you want to be... Yeah, that's fine. I mean, if you're paying, that way we don't have to have be a standard them. each. Not from one of you. She's looking around. Oh, okay. <laughs> did did I you still... give her more gold or no? No, I gave her a one. I give her. I also give her one. I mean, oh, oh, so generous. <laughs> I can't possibly take it. And she puts it in her pocket. <laughs> you have all the money, though, right, yeah. Bobby? Um, <laughs> so is it actually ten standards that I got to give her for all the rooms? Well, how many of you? There's five, right? Five. Four, four of you. Sorry, Torad has got his own room. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, so he's, four gold. He's got an four standards where where he sits right, with so. his butt in the air. <laughs> all right, seventy. Why is he in this position? It it, it improves blood I th- flow. I think yes. the next <laughs> the next cutscene I'm going to have is going to be a, another Torad one. Where it's going to be in his new voice. <laughs> And you guys get the. It's gonna be like 15 minutes long. It's gonna be glorious. <laughs> I'm Dorad. <laughs> I can. I can uh, the the one thing that brings me comfort is to know that he can never play my character because without me, you guys can't play. So <laughs> therefore, he'll we'll make this happen, boys. <laughs> but Bobby, oh, I'm here to save you. NASCAR. Giggity giggity NASCAR. All right. Um, like them damn damn places. Uh. Where are we at? Okay. Um, you each get a room. Your own room. Now that you're paying, she can't kick you out. Yep. She totally took that money, though. <laughs> it's fine. Sure did. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't like it was that much. Um, what What do you guys need? You to, uh, do you want a bathroom? Bathroom? Okay. Bath. I can draw some baths. Um, how about uh, I get a f- few drinks for you guys tonight? And you're all rested up. There's Those a, are on the house, right? A ta- uh, yeah. Yeah, so a tavern's across the street. <laughs> and uh, we can go there, and we can have some drinks. Uh, maybe you guys could buy a lady a drink. I mean, or, you know, we can just go there, and I can show you a place. And it's just kind of motions across the street. So I go over. All right, yeah, here's your room. Come on. Anyway, I, uh, I go over to um, Strom. Like, for every bath that is run, I need you to bless it so we can wash this icky feeling off of ourselves. I will do so. Well, I'll fast forward some time. You guys uh, bathe up in the holy waters of his God. It really smells like bath water. Doesn't really make a difference that you guys could tell, but he does something over him. You do whatever right you have to do. He dips his holy symbol in it, kind of like a, a couple times. He's like says some words teabagging. under his breath. He's pretty much teabagging <laughs> while saying some prayers. And uh, I don't want to be first. Sends about five minutes I'm under first. each one. Okay, you can you can bathe in the blood of his enemies. That's <laughs> that's fine, but you get to bathe in my teabagging of the water. No, there's different tanks. I'm oh no, he's only gonna do it once. There's only oh, one. Now you're last. Oh <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But now each of you get your own bath, and uh, yeah, and we'll I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll fast forward. Let's get our own baths. Did you miss that part? Enjoy your bloody lactose intolerant <laughs> bath. Bloody. Yes. He put his holy <laughs> symbol up around your neck and then chopped. Did you ever hear him say, "I wash my holy symbol up"? No, you didn't. It's because because it he was just cleanly. like, "This is fine." <laughs> didn't you hear him say it came off cleanly? Yeah, that does not go. mean it came off without any blood in her body. I heard cleanly, so there was no blood on it. A couple hours later. <laughs> you guys are bathed, and if you want to take a little nap and all that stuff, it's 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 dinner late dinner time, like 7 p.m., somewhere around yeah, there. Yeah, other than food, I'm resting. Um, and praying. I'm, I'm going to go in, imbibe some spirits or mostly beer. Is anybody just stay in the room for the night? Everybody, uh... After I eat, I'll probably go back, because... There's nowhere to eat here. After I go eat, oh, I'll I come see, back. I see. 
I see, I see. Okay. Yeah, um, so we all go so to the So give tavern. me some money, Bobby. I'm going to the bar. <laughs> yeah, the bar is the tavern is where you guys get food and everything. Oh. So you guys are all you going to use your lady muscles to take it away from me. <laughs> this would be the time to do that. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, I'll give everybody – I mean, I don't think anybody use over four standards, so you can have four standards apiece. Okay. Wow. All right. Well, the elf is really stingy with money. Other things we learned today. <laughs> He's jotting it down too in a little a little ledger. He's like, <laughs> He's like, all right, I'll give everybody. No. Four He's got. Cents. I can see him like a little tiny like quill, and he just like licks it once or twice, puts in some things, and it's like, uh, that would be full standards. Okay. <laughs> all right. Alistair, four standards on this date and so, time. So, like my fees for identifying items. <laughs> <laughs> I am actually writing down who gets what. So. Actually, do we have time before like this? Before? I, I fast forward. It was around probably one in the afternoon when this all went down. Done by two. You were in your rooms and bathed and done by like two or three. Yeah, so, so we'll three. identify some items. Sure. I don't know how long it takes. Do we want... Do you Go want for one it. roll for everything, or want to roll? Um, Are you gonna take eight so, hours? Tell me what you're identifying. So I'm gonna identify the little stone, right? Okay, that'll require a roll. Okay. Okay. The necromantic thing in the pouch. Scrolls. Scrolls. Okay. I'll tell you those. What else? Um, his mace, his axe. I think that's it. Axe plus one axe and axe. All right. I'm not. You you normally would roll. I'm, I'm not. I'm not worried about. Time. I'm only gonna give you unique things. All right. Um, you give me a little bit more time. I'm not gonna give you a hard time. You know, like the only time I'm gonna have you roll for something that's not like super unique is if like, hey, I need this mace. I need to know what does right now. Gotcha. You, you know what I mean? I'm giving you time. Uh, the mace is a ghost touch plus one mace. There you go, Bobby. Heavy mace. Have send you at the ghosts. Ghost touch, <laughs> Bobby. It's incorporal creatures. It's incorporal itself, kind of. You know, the enchantment nice. on it. Uh, if you hit anything else, it's just a plus one heavy mace. Got but uh, and if you're hitting anything corporal, it does normal damage. Uh, and the uh, strange lady in the alley gave you that. If you want to remember, do you kind of remember what she said when she handed it to you? No. <laughs> and you Not just listen to the episode, too. I don't listen to every detail to memorize it. Plus, my memory sucks. That's why I have to release to it before the next time. Something that you'll be needing this. They'll die without it. Something to that effect. I can't remember exactly. You don't remember that? Yeah. Yeah. I, was, I, I do now that you said Right it. to the point. <laughs> so. That's weird, huh? That's weird. Yep. It's, <laughs> it's like, like a DMPC just... Just showed up like, hey, guys, you're going into some dangerous stuff without a plan. Here, take this. Oh, it's going to happen either way. Well, I, I'm praying to Carvoon and telling him thank you because I guarantee this part is his plan for me. Religious people. Uh, four scrolls. Part of their God's plan. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry. That's why I was able to hit something and I didn't stand in the background playing patty cakes with a fox. Hey, I helped. <laughs> like, I made your you guys, and I threw an axe at Straub. They're not so. four scrolls. They are a book. Hey, a small I, book, I just though. thought of something. Um, do I get a boon? Four. For all the stuff we talked about. <laughs> yes. I gave everyone one. There is no boon over oh, here. Oh, yeah. You have yeah, not you passed did, them You out. gave it out, but you didn't give out coins. You gave them, but you didn't <laughs> hand it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Like a reflex check. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the falling spells are in this book. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> you can use them, tear them out, and use them as a scroll if you want. Bane. Death Watch. Doom. Animate Dead. Lesser. Command Undead. And one of my personal favorites, Blindness and Deafness. Um, can I learn that from this book? I don't know how you work. Uh, a regular I'm, wizard. I does. work like a wizard for learning. Then yeah, spell. yeah, yeah. You have it in. You have that as you can learn a spell. Okay. I can't learn. I don't think Bane. Bane is a clerical spell, right? Uh, some of them might be. Uh, she was a <laughs> cleric and wizard. Gotcha. All right. So, uh, who meets Tia downstairs around seven? Strom is. 
Yeah, I am as well, but earlier I went and got clothes. Okay, yeah, if anybody wanted to get a change of clothes or something, we'll do, like, uh, official shopping. I know you got some money burning a hole in your pocket, but we'll do uh, real shopping offline. My clothes are adequate. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> okay, and Yuri's going to just eat and get some sleep. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Bevmora is going to go also with you you guys. So it's uh, Tia, Bevmora, Strom, and Alistair going to Songbird Tavern. Uh, you see, it's kind of a lively... Uh, it's pretty actually busy. Um, but as one of the uh, people working there see a Tia come in... They motioned for her, and they, they got a table for you guys, and apparently she called ahead on her cell, you know, and <laughs> reserved a table. Okay. <laughs> and, uh... You know, it would have been probably more efficient to walk across the street. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, who does that these days, you know? <laughs> Kids, right? Am I right? Um, and, uh, yeah, so you guys all sit around the table. Uh, so a young girl around 16, 17, 18 in that ballpark played by, played by Macy Williams comes um, rolling up to you guys to take your order. Help me out. Uh, I think we'd like to sample the local breweries. Beer? Yes, as many flavors as you have. Okay, beer. You, sir? Your finest mead. Beer, okay. <laughs> Tia? Um, I'll take wine. Wine? Okay. Bev Morgan's ah, I'll take some beer and cheese. And uh, would you like uh, to eat? Mm, what's tonight's special? Radish stew. <laughs> Radish stew. <laughs> A roast. No, we'll find she goes, beer. We only have one meal, sir. We will take it. <laughs> None of you have eaten, really, so. <laughs> yeah, true enough. Um, but uh, I, I cooked it. You know, you want to try it and you like it. Um, I hope you like it. She kind of looks around awkwardly. Okay. Um, I'm sure we'll enjoy it. Oh, oh, okay. She runs off. <laughs> Tia goes, uh, Lorana's uh, very shy. That's Torad's <laughs> sister. Be careful. <laughs> I think it's worse than we fought. They only have one type of beer here. We've landed very far from civilization. <laughs> uh, she does bring a beer. It is, in its defense, pretty good. Okay. I mean, it's it, you know, it, it'll wash the food down. These peasants, they did all right. It lacks body, but there is a certain degree of floral hoppy flavor, I think. It's not terrible. It has a froth. That's all you need. Memora slams her first one down that's already finished. Yeah, good. She swipes her mouth. You had just kind of like did that whole thing. She burps real loud. Well, you enjoyed it. You know what? That's what it's there for. Beer. I'll just down mine. Me papa used to say that uh, a beer on an empty stomach was always the bestest of ideas. He did. Mm-hmm. And she's uh, look like she's waiting for another beer. She gets her other beer, and a fresh uh, roasted lamb comes out with gravy, sweet potatoes, like uh, roasted carrots, and like a little cake with caramel on it, melted caramel on it. Okay. It looks actually super good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Like I've actually me describing it. I'm like, <laughs> I'm a little. I can eat. Hunger. <laughs> yeah. Well, Strom is definitely digging in. Oh, it's. It's the best meal you've been in your, this you've ever had in this lifetime, anyway. It's yep. radish stew, <laughs> yeah. and this is uh, McDonald's. <laughs> I don't know. Even in your old days, I mean, yeah, this is pretty pretty damn good compared to like you're surprised to get this on a place like this and a town like this. I'll tell you, I'll give you that. I could use another brewery, but this is this is delicious. Okay. After you eat, you know, I'm sure you guys all finish your plates, have a couple beers in. You guys are free to socialize, do what you want. Bev Mora is just kind of like drinking and just watching you guys, watching like people watching. So, yes, do what you want. And then T is like, um, is there anything I can, you know, help you with on anything? Like, how new are you to this area? I mean, what can I do for you? Man, I'm thirsty. She's looking at her beer. Looking at her. Where'd my money go? Kind of looks sidelong at you guys. It's on me. Oh, I get another one. Thank you. And she's like getting another beer. 
Oh, wine. Sorry, she's drinking wine. And then after she gets her wine, now, how can I help you? We've only been here for a few weeks. I don't know if it's been weeks, has it? In town? This is day one. Day one in town. Yeah, day one time, but I mean, how long we've been back a lot? Uh, four days? Four or five days. Something like that. Okay, so, okay. Okay. (laughs) We've only been in town for a little less than a week. (laughs) Maybe six. I'd have to go back and count. I've been bad about keeping up with the calendar. Well, we'll just say this, that Strom's perception of time is much different from the rest of you guys. Because it is. Fair enough. Um, Um... We've arrived on this island, but we just got here to Hearthgrave today and dealt with the nasty necromancy that's been going on. I actually heard about that between the first time we talked and now. And, oh, impressive. I got heroes. Heroes at my inn. Not going to exploit that at all. Strong just laughs. Well, being new to the area, um, we're run by a town council of about I think five or six of people. I mean, ranging from some nobles to commoners. We have a, a loggers guild here. A faction called they call themselves the Common Man. They're like, as the title would suggest, they're commoners ranging from different you know fields of expertise. But they kind of like are a faction that kind of make sure that they don't get stepped on by you know the uh, higher ups uh, got the hunter's lodge as well they're also another guild I mean this is kind of ranging all out around town I mean I don't know what inter- oh, we got the Redding gang there they've been all the talk of the town and uh, and then the silverman the what they're called the silverman what are they ah uh, they're men who are silver, obviously. Mm. You can take it different ways. Slow down <laughs> on your drink, Alistair. I think. Uh, oh, I'm just having fun. <laughs> they are. Uh, I don't know how to describe them exactly. They. Uh, I, w- I don't want to call them a gang. He like looks around or like over her shoulder, kind of scared. Um, there's some over there. Actually, she nods with her. Organization of like-minded individuals. Who express <laughs> themselves through violence? Yes, n- n- that's not a gang. It's just an organization of like-minded individuals who sometimes express themselves through violence. He, he, that's what he said. Points at him. That's some over there. And you see a couple of guys across the bar there at the end of the bar drinking. You see a silver metal band around each of the right biceps. Uh, other than that, they're kind of dressed differently. And on their right temple is a silvery colored tattoo. It actually looks like somebody tattooed a coin onto the side of their head. But you can tell it's a tattoo, but man, that, that's crazy. Like, it's silver in color from where you can tell from over here. Uh, they look like a, a rough couple of a, a dudes and ladies over there. She kind of looks over there like motions at them, but she can tell she's obviously afraid of them. And then, yeah, the silverman. No, no, no. No, we're not. I'm not going to. Very well. They're uh, they were like miners. Like we had a large silver miner, silver mine around here. Oh. And um, then a war broke out. Some sort. I forget what. You know what it was over. So many of them. Uh, they all went off to combat. And when they came back, they found their mine was stripped and shut down. And so they turned to a different profession. But yeah, that's this place. And then. A nutshell, that's pretty much... There's not a lot going on here. Uh, there's an archery contest coming up soon in a, f- a week or two. I think there's like the the uh, pot is 500 standards. Yeah, my archery is not that good. <laughs> uh, uh, Mora, wouldn't you be uh, interested in archery? I'd consider that 500 standard ours. Good as ours. She's kind of swaying in her seat. Yeah, so that's how kind of the night goes. The, uh, are you kind of keeping your shit together, Strom? It seems like the others are having a good you, time. I'm letting them have all good time. Uh, I want all four of your... You know what? No, that's still... No. Yeah, all four. If you're paying for the lady, 
Yeah. She's buying the best stuff they want for all four of your standards. I knew it. Fair enough. <laughs> That's with food, though. Okay. She's not an elf. Tia's not an elf. No, that elf. about me. <laughs> oh. Probably a good idea you didn't. Cause she's like, like Tia's flirting with you hard, Strom, to get like, just one more glass. I mean, you can say no to her if you like, but. No, she's being kind to us. I'm not being generous. And you do see a dwarf kind of like sitting alone at a table throughout the night. And nobody seems to be messing with him. The only person that seems to talk to him is Lorana, which is the one girl played by Macy Williams. She's great, by the way. Halfway through the night, everybody's like, song, 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 song. And she gets up and she sings one of the best songs that you've... And you actually heard she's, she cooked this food, too. So not only is she the cook, the waitress... She's also apparently uh, provides like some entertainment here, and when she sings, it's it's hard not to uh, like the little strings of your heart being pulled. Like there's like it's sad, it's beautiful, but it's incredibly sad and uh, and amazing. Her voice is amazing, her performance is amazing. The whole bar get like you can drop a pin in here. I'd sing for you as Marty. But I feel like I, I don't want you guys to cry too much. So I'm looking after you guys. I, I'd give you a our performance. Ears bleed. But you can imagine the performance. That, like it's just it's beautiful. And after she's done, you know, everybody's like hoots and hollers and claps and everything. And it's as good as the Blue Tentacle Lady in Fifth Element. Well, that was like kind of opera, but it is a beautiful voice like that. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And then the and if unless anybody wants to do anything out throughout the night. Strom's actually curious about the dwarf, so he actually goes down and hands him a beer. Asks if he can sit with him in common. It's a free country, isn't it? It is. I don't but care also you do long shanks. Just <laughs> do it quietly. <laughs> <laughs> do it quietly. At least I think it is. The well, last I look, it is, but at the same time, you're already sitting here. It's only polite that I ask. Well, let me sit down and shut up. <laughs> Strong kind of laughs a little bit. A beer. He takes it and drinks it. Doesn't really say anything to you. Very quiet. Do you try to strike up any conversation with him or anything? Yeah, I try. Do I need to do a little charisma check? Or... No. Uh, yes. Okay. But in a different reason. New, no, not a six. Okay. Unless he rolls lower than me, but I doubt it. Um, you're sitting with him a few minutes. You're really striking out. He just kind of gives you grunts. And, mm. Yeah, we're okay. You know, kind of deal. As uh, Lorana comes up to you with table, bringing you guys another beer, she kind of leans down and whispers to you. It's like, let him come to you, dear. It might take some time. I nod. Sorry, and she pats you on it, pats you on the shoulder, and uh, goes away. Um, so, uh, I tell him, you know, have a, have a good night, sir. Sorry to bother you. And kind of nods to you, like kind of a nod, like thanks for the beer, kind of nod. But that's mm-hmm. it. You're as charming as rolling around in a rose bush. Well, I rolled a three. <laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> wow. <laughs> but should be like, here's your beer, buddy. Have a great night. <laughs> You know what? While they're still having fun, I'm going to go up to the Silverman. Oh, oh, all right. Did, did, our first didn't didn't I night. say drunkenly, no, no, just no. no. And he was like, I'm not going to do anything. All right. There are three individuals standing there. Uh, one woman and uh, two dudes. Uh, they're leaning against the bar. Nobody, Everybody's giving a wide berth, and you walk up to them. They're all dressed in various leathers, got weapons, you know, up and down. Um, one of the men is very handsome, like, cleft chin, like, looks like, you know, a Fabio kind of guy, like, you know, like a Prince Charming, long, you know, blonde hair. Just like, even when he turns and looks at you, his hair goes in slow motion. And like, and you see like light in the background kind of like flicker off of him. You're just like, oh, like, like, uh, the other guy uh, looks like somebody, um smashed his face in 
with the ugly tree and then he hit the ugly ground and then went through the ugly ground and then rolled down the ugly hill and he just like looks like somebody he's been beat his face in multiple times and uh and then the woman kind of has an air mistake of blocking swords and blunt objects with With his face face. yeah yeah that's the kind of deal pork chops yeah he's got the the boxer ears and the nose just that's been broken probably a hundred times and then the the woman while she's in leather she's kind of an air of refinement to her like she's smoking one of those cigarettes but on the little reed thing like nobleman cigarette and she's smoking it through like a mesh kind of gloves overdone makeup a mix mix between a like a noble woman and a gang member (laughs) organization (laughs) organization. (laughs) and as you uh as you approach you see that they're all kind of their hands are going towards their weapons a little bit and they're looking at you up and down and man who knows what's gonna happen find out next time (laughs) (laughs) roll up a character yeah you're gonna die I don't know what the hell you're doing (laughs) I mean before it'd be like just go back to the end that's sleepy time (laughs) 